All right, so this lesson is on velocity versus time graphs. It's organized into parts, so this is part one. So what we're gonna be able to do by the end of all of the parts of this lesson is draw a velocity versus time graph. And this is gonna be for any motion, whether it's speeding up, slowing down, changing direction, or simply not moving. And the way that we're gonna do this is by determining the velocity from different representations, whether it be a position versus time graph, a motion map, or even just a description of motion. And the reason why this is important is because the very mechanism that we're gonna be using today to get a velocity versus time graph is the same exact mechanism that's used in speedometers. Yes, that's right. The speedometers that are used to track your speed and give you a ticket when you're on the road is the same exact technology and mechanism that we're going to use to make a velocity versus time graph. So it's a pretty valuable skill. That being said, let's talk about where velocity versus time graphs come from. So when you did the moving man activity, you should have hopefully noticed a pattern between your position versus time graphs and your velocity versus time graphs. For example, when a man is moving slow, his position is not changing very quickly. Oops, that did not come out right, so I guess I can't use that tool. So the slope of the position versus time graph line is very small, and the resulting velocity graph shows a horizontal line. Now when a man is moving quickly, his slope is much steeper, and the resulting velocity versus time graph is still a horizontal line, but it's a little bit higher on the graph. So let's talk about the difference between these two motions. It might not be obvious why the velocity versus time graph is just a flat line. If I look at my position versus time graph, my velocity equals my slope. Now when I have a linear line, my slope is not changing which means my velocity is not changing. In other words, it's constant. If my slope is constant, then that means my velocity is not gonna be a changing value, it's gonna be a constant value, which is demonstrated here by these flat horizontal lines. At all moments of time, the velocity is the same. So regardless of whether I'm at time zero or time 100, my velocity was the same value at all points on my position versus time graph. Now, if my slope is a smaller magnitude, my velocity is gonna be a smaller magnitude. So for example, when my slope was a, a very small slope, my velocity was only five. When my slope was very steep, my velocity jumped up in magnitude all the way to 10. So there's a simple pattern here. My velocity graph comes from the slope of my position versus time graph. So let's see how this would look for a man that was standing still. A man that's standing still at four meters is going to have a position versus time graph that looks like a horizontal line. The slope of this line is in fact zero. I know that because he's not moving any meters per second and a flat horizontal line has no rise over run. So if my slope is zero, that means my velocity is going to be zero. So once again, I'm seeing a horizontal line because my slope is constant, but now my magnitude for my velocity is zero instead of five or 10 because the man is not moving at all. So to cut it short, what we're gonna say our pattern is, is that velocity comes from the slope of your position versus time graph. And that'll keep it simple. So that being said, let's move on to starting um, to generate our own velocity versus time graphs. We're gonna have a variety of representations we're gonna be able to do this with, um, but we're gonna start with motion maps. So once again, I don't know why it does this for my motion maps, but it doesn't print out my labels very nicely. So I'm gonna really quickly relabel these positions. So the stick mark is negative five, negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, nice. All right, so if I'm looking at this motion map, I can see that my starting point is over here on the far left. So at zero seconds, this is where my object was located. Now, when I'm making a position versus time graph, the only thing I'm concerned with is the location of these dots on the number line. 
When I'm graphing a velocity versus time graph, I'm not concerned with the location of the dots as much as I'm concerned with the velocity at those positions. So how can I figure out my velocity by looking at my position versus time graph? Well, that's easy. My velocity is going to be my displacement over time. So if I can figure out how much my position is changing each second, that's gonna be my velocity. So if I go back to my other tool and I write really small, um, between zero seconds and one second, my object is displaced positive one meter. How do I know that? It goes from negative four to negative three. That's an increase of one meter. So in one second, my object goes one meter in the positive direction. So my velocity for all of these red arrows is one meter per second. So I'm gonna start plotting that on my graph. I've got a very nice graph here. Um, I'm gonna kind of expand it so that I've got some room. Um, I'll go up by two. So let's say that this tick mark right here is one, this tick mark right here is two, this tick mark right here is three, this tick mark right here is four, and five. And then going down will be the same pattern, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. And I'm just doing this to kind of expand my graph so that um, I'll use up more of the spaces on the tiles, or more of the tiles. Okay, so at zero seconds, my velocity was one meter per second. So I'm just gonna plot a point. Maybe I should stay consistent with the colors red. At one second, my velocity was still one meter per second. At two seconds, my velocity was still one meter per second. And at three seconds, my velocity was still three meters per second, or I'm sorry, one meter per second. So for the first three seconds of travel, my velocity was a constant one meter per second. Now, if I direct my attention to these dots over here at four seconds, and five seconds and six seconds, there's a change in the motion. At those moments in time, the object is not moving. I can tell because my position is unchanging and there's no velocity vectors indicating no movement. So for these moments in time, my velocity is equal to zero. So for those moments on my graph, I'm going to plot that my velocity was equal to zero. So at four seconds, my velocity was zero. At five seconds, my velocity was zero. And at six seconds, my velocity was zero. Now let's focus on the last portion of the graph. At seven seconds and on. So seven seconds is at this point. Eight seconds is at the following point. Nine seconds is at the last point. So at these last points, my velocity is very large and it's in the positive direction. It looks like from seven seconds to eight seconds, my position changes two meters, which means it does this in one second. So my velocity is simply two meters per second. So I'm gonna plot that on my graph. At seven seconds, my velocity was two. At eight seconds, my velocity was two. And at nine seconds, my velocity was two. Oh, I forgot to connect the dots on my graph. That's okay, I'll do that right now. So what I have here is a connected graph in segments. I'm missing some of the connecting lines that's connecting these segments. What I mean by that is what's happening between four seconds, I'm sorry, three seconds and four seconds right here. Because there's no line connecting the red segment and the green segment. Here's how we'll normally illustrate this on a velocity versus time graph. You may have been wondering what exactly is happening that's allowing our velocity to change in an instant from one meter per second to zero meters per second. Doesn't it have to slow down in that time? And it does in fact have to slow down. So we could connect this with a segment that's diagonal like this. Many times what you'll see, just to keep things simple, is you'll see segments drawn right on top of each other connected by a dotted line like this, indicating that there was no slowing down and velocity just changed instantaneously. 
We can do that as well just to keep things simple and say that for now, since we haven't explored motion that involves slowing down or speeding up, velocity just changed in a moment. At one moment, it was going one meters per second, and then at the next moment, it was going zero meters per second. And that's how I think I'm going to move forward and draw these velocity versus time graphs. I'm going to show instantaneous changes in velocity instantaneous why do i feel like i instantaneous that word looks like i spelled it really wrong i hope i didn't oh uh, it looks wrong instant no nope, i think that's right i think that's right uh, don't judge me if it's wrong it looks really wrong instantaneous changes in velocity and once again, instantaneous changes in velocity are just going to be illustrated with those vertical dotted lines that connect the segments, showing that at one moment it was one velocity, and at the next moment it was a different velocity. So that being said, we're going to do one more example together, and then I'll let you try one. So let's draw a velocity versus time graph for the following motion map. So my starting point is right here at zero seconds. So from zero second to one second, it looks like I traveled yet again one meter, which means my velocity is one meter per second. So all of these arrows indicate one meter per second um, is my velocity. So from zero seconds to two seconds, oops, I'm gonna change the thickness. From zero seconds to one seconds to two seconds to three seconds. Oops. Three seconds. My velocity was one meter per second. So I'm going to use my same graph that I had earlier. I'm going to draw my tick marks so that I use my graph really nicely. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative five. All right, so at zero seconds, my velocity was one. At one second, my velocity was one. At two seconds, my velocity was one. And at three seconds, my velocity was one. Nice flat line from zero to three seconds. Skadoosh. And then at four seconds, it stops moving. At five seconds, it stops moving. And at six seconds, it stops moving. Um, so from four to five, six seconds, four to six seconds, my velocity is zero. So I'll plot that here. Very nice. And I'm actually gonna extend this line to right underneath my red segment, and I'm gonna connect with a dotted line once again to just show there was an instantaneous change in velocity. It was moving one meter per second, and now it's moving zero meters per second. We don't know how it slowed down. We're just gonna assume it was an instant change. Now my last points on my motion map show very different change in motion. Not only did it speed up, but it moved to the left. Um, and it looks like it's going two meters each second. So my velocity is going to be not just two meters per second, but negative two meters per second because it's going in the negative direction now. So when I plot my velocity on my graph, I'm gonna show that at uh, seven seconds my velocity was negative two at eight seconds it was negative two at nine seconds it was negative two so how did i go from zero to negative two we're going to say it was an instantaneous change so i'm going to draw a dotted line and uh, uh oh my dotted line isn't connected to anything so i'm going to extend this little green segment and connect them like this say there was an instantaneous change in velocity so that was my last example i'm going to have you guys try this one without me so go ahead and pause the video when you're ready to check your answer go ahead and unpause all right i'm assuming if you're watching this that means that you are ready to check your answer so for the first moments in time i'm going to color code them here my object is going two meters per second so for the first three seconds i'm going to show that my velocity is two meters per second so it's going to look something like this 
0, 1, 2. Oh, I added too many points for the first two seconds. Sorry, not the first three seconds. And then from three seconds to four seconds to five seconds, my velocity is simply zero. So now I'm going to start plotting points at zero meters per second. And then for my final points, my velocity is one meter per second in the positive direction. So I'm going to start plotting my points now at one meter per second. Skadoosh. And then to connect my segments, I'm going to start drawing some vertical dotted lines to show instantaneous changes. But oh no, they're not connected to anything. So I'm just going to extend this line here to say there was an instantaneous change in velocity, just for now. Hopefully this is what you got for your try. I'm going to end the video here for part one. Tune in for part two.